The first thing I like to do when assembling the 4130 is getting in the setting mechanism. To do this, you might want to install the gear train bridge. Then you can take the gear train bridge off after the setting mechanism is installed. Here we have the cap jewels. Good thing to get these done. Then install them into the balance bridge. And don't forget to oil the cap jewels for the escape wheel. Now here we have the cap jewels installed and we check the balance end shake and make sure that the balance is free. The next thing we prepare is R, parts that we will be um, coating with epilam. After that, we assemble the barrel. Once that's assembled, I like to install the crown wheel onto the gear train bridge. The next thing to prepare is the automatic module. Boom, together. Now we start doing some of the operating pieces for the chronograph. We have here the column wheel and one of the operating levers. Now we have a little tiny wire piece off to the right corner near the crown. I have that sitting there just to show you um, not to forget to put that in. It weaves under the operating lever but then when in, you install the gear train and the stop lever, you can see it's that little spring is weaved under the operating lever, yet it is weaved over the stop lever. So that's a notable point. Then I install the gear train bridge. And I do want to show you not to forget that spring off to the side. And I check the freedom of the gear train. Now here I have the barrel bridge installed with the ratchet wheel. And I check for a little backlash. Now I've installed the pallet fork with the balance wheel. Wound the watch up. And it's ticking pretty good. So we have the base caliber assembled with parts of the operating mechanism. Here I do a little slow-mo. And next are those two jaws that hook under this operating wheel. Those jaws clamp under the wheel when you start the chronograph and that wheel lifts up and engages the chrono runners. So here is the next step where we are installing the seconds runner, minute counter, and hour counter, also the intermediate wheel and the intermediate um, minute jumper. Um, once that is going, we actually have the chronograph on right now. So the wheels, that operating wheel that is lifted up into the seconds runner needs to be lined up in a certain way. And you could see that now there's a little dimple in the seconds runner and a divot in that uh, operating wheel. Um, I've also installed the hammer the reset hammer and you can see when those wheels line up where those two marks on the wheels line up the intermediate wheel jumps and now we have the chrono bridge on start stop reset functions all working. Just like that. Start. 
stop, reset. So the next order of business, we're installing that automatic module that we prepared earlier. And when that's installed, I still like to check the start, stop, and reset functions of the stopwatch. But right now I'd like to admire the movement a little bit because we will be flipping it over to the dial side, installing the hands. I'll do one more check. Start. Stop. And reset. Yeah, good looking movement, super clean dial. I love that glossy black dial, especially with that purple movement holder. Now we have the hands. I like to do the sub dial hands first making sure everything lines up. Now the rest, hour, minute, and seconds runner for the chrono. So here I will test the start, stop, and reset functions one more time with the hands on. These hands need to be pressed on pretty tight. And when the watch resets, everything jumps back to zero uh, almost instantaneously. So I wanna make sure that the hands are tight and they're not gonna fly off when the watch resets. Now I know that there's a lot involved with actually servicing these 41 movements, but if you're looking for a guide, especially a slideshow guide, uh, if you're servicing one of these, then this will help you if you've forgotten the order of uh, assembly. And uh, you can maybe use this as a way to make your life a little easier. But I know I didn't go over any of the oiling or many of the other checks that we need to do, but that's okay. This is just a casual video and a user-friendly slideshow for anyone out there curious about the assembly process. The last thing we will do now is finally install the auto, the oscillating weight. And a good idea before installing the hands is to put in this weight and double check that you can wind the watch and that this weight has some freedom, which it does. So the hands are on, the watch is cased. The final thing I like to do is reinstall that oscillating weight and double check that it has Feels freedom like as Friday, well, that it's winding the watch. But it's Wednesday. And that it's not binding when you and here it is, all cased up, bracelet on. Now this watch was uh, movement servicing only, no polishing. And I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed creating this slideshow. Thank you very much.